Thank you so much, Rabbi Cohen. Such a treat. I, th I was thinking, I think this might be my first Dvar Torah to an audience, to a kahal, in, uh, since the pandemic began. So at least 18 months. So just really thank you all for being here. It's like amazing to get to see faces and yeah, smiles behind masks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So this, this past week was the first week of my adult B-mitzvah class on prayer with over 20 incredible students, some who I know are here tonight, who have signed on to be part of this incoming adult B-mitzvah cohort. So of course, I have found myself thinking of tefillah, prayer. Particularly this week, the week of Parshat Veyera, about Abraham himself and his relationship to our prayers. The beginning of Veyera, uh, excuse me, the beginning of Parshat Veyera feels like it is all about prayer. It begins with Abraham sitting in his tent, healing from his circumcision, when three mysterious men appear before him. Abraham immediately stands up to greet them, and the commentators say this is a clue that what Abraham is actually doing is standing up to pray, or more specifically, that he is getting up to pray the Amidah, the standing prayer. The beginning of the Amidah that we say nowadays starts by praising our ancestors, Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Leah, Elohe Bilha, Elohe Zilpa. And then the closing statement, the closing chatima of the first bracha is Baruch Ata Adonai, Magen Avraham Ufoked Sarah. An English translation might be, Blessed are you God who shielded Abraham and took note of or remembered Sarah. I have long had a positive relationship with the matriarchal side of this blessing, poked sarah. The specific wording comes back to our Parsha this week. God took note of Sarah. This is referring to when God blessed Sarah with a child a year after it was foretold to her. As God had promised, God remembered. Vayera is also the only Parsha where we see God interacting with Sarah directly. They have a dialogue where Sarah shares her own disbelief that she will truly give birth to a child in her advanced age. Really, she seems to be asking, can I really have this thing that I have longed for for so long? Baruch ata Adonai poked Sarah to me means, thank you, God, for taking note of my innermost wishes and desires and for remembering what to bring to fruition. Thank you for taking note of me. However, what about Magain Avraham? That side of the blessing has been harder for me to connect with, and I wanted to spend some time this week thinking about it. There is a teaching that this blessing formulation also has its roots in Vayera, from the second line of the Parsha, in fact. Vaisa ena vayar vehine shlosha anashim nitzavim alav, vayar vayaretz likratam mi petach haohel vayshtachavu artza. Abraham lifted up his eyes, and there were three men stationed there. He immediately ran to greet them and bowed toward the ground. In the Hasidic tradition, Avraham is associated with the Sephira of Chesed, loving kindness. The rabbis trace much of this association back to this scene at the beginning of Vayera, where Avraham rushes to greet and serve the people at his tent door. According to the rabbis, these three strangers were in fact three angels. The fact that he immediately bows before them and hurries to make them food and wash their feet showcases his humility and willingness to greet others with extreme loving kindness, even before knowing who they are. There's a teaching in Pirkei Avot that starts, who is considered a disciple of Abraham? One who possesses these three characteristics a good eye, a humble soul, and a spirit that is low to the ground. Which is to say that if someone wants to be a true follower of Abraham, they should be comfortable with humility. The reasoning? Because when Abraham greeted these three complete strangers, he immediately bowed to the ground and made himself lower than them. This, the rabbis say, is the meaning of Magain Avraham asking that we be in relationship with God in the way that Avraham is in relationship with the angels, that we rush to bow toward God in humility as we do when we say the first bracha of the Amidah, and that God shield us and protect us with the same chesed 
the same kindness that Abraham showed to the angels. As an aside, the rabbis say each of these angels were sent to Abraham with a different task. The first, Michael, sent to inform Abraham and Sarah about the news of their soon-to-be child. The second, Gavriel, sent to overthrow Sodom, an event which happens later in the Parsha. And the third angel is named either Raphael or Nuriel, depending on where you look, sent to heal Abraham's pain from his circumcision. Raphael is the angel of healing, which of course makes a certain amount of sense, and Nuriel is the angel of protecting us from harm. To speak of angels is almost inherently to speak of the divine, uh, to speak of divine beings guiding and protecting us, which may be another piece of the Magain Avraham blessing. And there is a Hasidic commentary that says that the names of the angels themselves hint at this. Michael, Mem, Gavriel, Gimel, Nuriel, Nun. Mem, Gimel, Nun, Magain Avraham. There is another semi-blessing that we say at the beginning of the Amidah that I've been ignoring, which are the words we say right as we enter the, Sh the Shmona Esrei, the Amidah. We take three steps forward and three steps back and whisper to ourselves, Adonai, Sefatai, Tiftach, Ufi, Yagid, Tehilatecha. God, open up my lips so that my mouth will tell of your praise. Adonai, Sefatai, Tiftach comes from Psalm 51. Here, the Midrash takes a microscope to the word tiftach, which means open, and connects it with the word mafteach, meaning key. According to the Midrash, there are special matters for which only God holds the key. Here are the keys that God holds. The key for birth and fertility, the key for rain, the key for restoring life, the key for prosperity and success, the key for freeing the enslaved, the key for opening up our eyes, the key for opening up our ears, and the key for opening up our mouths. And there's more. It's a pretty impressive and awe-inspiring list that we're meant to think of as we start the Amidah. Amazingly, there is a rabbinic tradition that connects this opening phrase, Adonai Sefatai Tiftach, with Vayera as well. At the beginning of the Parsha, we are told that Avraham is sitting at the opening of his tent which is called Petach HaOhel. This opening, this Petach, is meant to help us imagine that Avraham is actually standing at the opening right before prayer, saying these words right before he begins his own personal Amidah. Having done this deep dive, I think I have a new handle on the Amidah's opening blessing. Magain Avraham, may we be humble enough to bow down in awe of all that Kadosh Baruch Hu is able to do. Poked Sarah, and may we be chutzpahdik enough to ask God to actually do it. Shabbat shalom.